Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 27 on basic statistics. In this lecture, we are going to discuss how to find out Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness. In previous lecture, we have discussed that Carl Pearson coefficient of skewness is given by mean minus mode divided by standard deviation. So we are going to discuss one question on how to find out coefficient of skewness using this formula. So this question was asked in GTU winter 2020 exam. Here we are asked to find Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness for this uh, continuous frequency distribution. Here classes are given. Classes are starting from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 and corresponding frequencies are given for each class. So as we know for this formula we have to calculate mean of this continuous frequency distribution we have to find mode as well as standard deviation for this frequency distribution. So to find out mean we know that formula for mean is mu equal to sigma f into x divided by capital N where capital N is nothing but sum of all the frequencies and here classes are given so this x is considered as mid value for each of these classes. So this is direct formula for computing mean. Now if we are interested in the shortcut formula then we can consider this type of change of origin and scale. We can assume some value of x as assumed mean and we can consider this change of variable from x to u. We define mu variable u by this substitution u equal to x minus a divided by h where h is nothing but size of each class. So if we change variable x to new variable u by this transformation u equal to x minus a divided by h then the formula for mean becomes mu equal to capital A plus h by n times sigma f into u. So either we can use this direct formula or we can use this shortcut formula. If we use shortcut formula then we will have a number of calculations will be short or we will have short calculations if we use this shortcut formula. So we are going to use this formula to find out mean. Now we have formula for variance is sigma square equal to sigma f times x square divided by n minus mu square where mu is nothing but mean sigma f into x divided by n. So this is the formula for variance if we consider variable x as it is. But if we change the variable using this substitution which we are going to use for calculation of mean then sigma square will be converted into this formula sigma square equal to h square times sigma f into u square divided by n minus sigma f into u divided by n whole square where n is sum of all the frequencies. So you can see this formula is the formula of variance this formula and here we are just replacing x by new variable u and we are multiplying this sigma square which is in terms of x by h square that is square of class size. This is nothing but sigma square if we consider original variable x and uh, here we replace x by u. So because we are using this transformation u equal to x minus a over h we will find out mean and variance by these two formulas mu equal to a plus h by n sigma f into u sigma square equal to h square times sigma f into u square divided by n minus sigma f into u divided by n whole square. So it is easy to remember 
to find out variance using this substitution we will replace x by u in this formula okay. here mu is nothing but mu equal to sigma f into x divided by n whole square so in this formula we are replacing x by u and we are multiplying this by h square to obtain variance in terms of new variable u sigma square will be equal to h square times sigma f into u square divided by n minus sigma f into u divided by n whole square so first we will find out mean and variance once we find out variance we can obtain standard deviation using its square root and then we will calculate mode we recall the formula for mode also if we have continuous frequency distribution then mode is given by l plus h times f1 minus f0 divided by 2 f1 minus f0 minus f2 where f1 is the frequency of modal class f0 is the frequency of the class which is preceding the modal class f2 is the frequency of the class succeeding the modal class and modal class is that class which corresponds to maximum frequency so all these things we have discussed in earlier lectures of uh, measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion so if you have not seen those lectures i suggest you to watch those lectures on measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion so that you can understand all these things clearly how to find out mean variance mean is measure of central tendency variance is measure of dispersion mode is measure of central tendency and we have discussed all these things earlier in earlier lectures so you can refer those lectures first if you have not referred then you should go for this lecture so we assume that we are familiar in the computation of mean mode and standard deviation so that we can find out coefficient of skewness which is ratio of mean minus mode and standard deviation so to find out all these quantities mean and variance we will require the uh, columns first we have to decide that how many columns we require so because we are changing the variable we will require mid values for each class so first column will be classes first we will write classes then we will write frequencies then we will find out mid values for each class then we will find out values of u corresponding to each mid value then for mean we require these products f into u and for variance we will require these products f into u square so we will require this number of columns before that uh, we first uh, find out mid value for each class and we decide what we will select for assumed mean class size for each class is 10 we can see if we take the difference of upper limit and lower limit for each class then it is 10 so here i have prepared the frequency table first i have written classes then frequencies mid value is nothing but average of lower limit and upper limit so for first class mid value will be 0 plus 10 divided by 2 that is 5 similarly for second class mid value is 10 plus 20 which is 30 divided by 2 which is 15 so in this way we have obtained mid values for each class by taking average of lower limit and upper limit now we can consider any value as assumed mean but we consider that value of x which is in the middle of the data so as obvious this value we will consider as capital a so formula for new variable is u equal to x minus a divided by h a is 25 h is 10 so we have u equal to x minus 25 divided by 10 so using this formula we find out values of u 
so if we start by taking x equal to 5 here we will have 5 minus 25 that is minus 20 divided by 10 it is minus 2 similarly for x equal to 15 we have 15 minus 25 that is minus 10 divided by 10 which is minus 1 for x equal to 25 u will be 0 25 minus 25 for x equal to 35 u will be equal to 35 minus 25 that is 10 divided by 10 which is 1 and for u equal to 45 u will for x equal to 45 u will be 45 minus 25 that is 20 divided by 10 which is 2 then we multiply each value of u by frequencies and we will obtain these products f times u 13 into minus 2 minus 26 20 into minus 1 minus 20 30 into 0 it is 0 25 into 1 25 12 times 2 24 then we require these products f into u square so here f is 13 u is minus 2 so u square will be 4 so 13 into 4 that is 52 then f is 20 u square will be 1 20 into 1 that is 20 30 into square of 0 that is 0 here square of 1 is 1, square of 2 is 4. So 25 into u square, 25, 12 into 4, that is 48. Okay, now we have made a total of those values which are required. This is the total of all the frequencies, that is sigma f, which is capital N. This is total of this type of products, f into u. So sigma f into u is 3 this is sigma f into u square so now here i have written all these things systematically first we are selecting assumed mean so we take a equal to 25 class size is h equal to 10 n is sigma f which is 100 sum of all the frequencies then we have changed variable by this substitution u equal to x minus a over h a is 25 h is 10 so this is the formula for new variable so now the mean is given by this formula mu equal to a plus h by n sigma f times u value of a is 25 h is 10 n is 100 and sigma f into u is 3 so all these values are substituted in this formula and we obtain that mean is 25.3. Then we find out variance by this formula sigma square equal to h square times sigma f into u square divided by n minus square of sigma f into u divided by n. This quantity is 48 sigma f into u square. No, it is 145 sigma f into u square is 145 sigma f into u is 3 h equal to 10 this is 145 this is 3 n is 100 so we have substituted all these values and we calculated variance as 144.91 standard deviation is square root of this value so if we take square root we obtain that standard deviation is 12.0379 so we have obtained mean and standard deviation now we require mode so for mode we have to first decide that what is the class corresponding to maximum frequency so we take a look in the column of frequencies and we find out the maximum frequency so if we observe that maximum frequency is 3030. So the class corresponding to maximum frequency is called modal class. So 2230 is our modal class. That is value of mode will be in this class. This frequency corresponding to 
model class is denoted by f1 this frequency is denoted by f0 and this frequency is denoted by f2 class size is h equal to 10 and we have ready made formula for model class lower limit of model class is 20 so here we have written how we calculated mode to find mode first we find the model class in given data maximum frequency is 30 therefore model class is 20 to 30 lower limit of model class is denoted by L which is 20 frequency of model class is 30 that we have denoted by F1 this is the frequency of model class 20 is the frequency of the class preceding the model class which is denoted by F0 and 25 is the frequency of the model frequency of the class succeeding the model class which is 25 so F0 frequency of the class preceding the model class F2 frequency of the class succeeding the model class which is 25 H equal to 10 and we have ready made formula for mode of a continuous frequency distribution L plus H times F1 minus F0 2 F1 minus F0 minus F2 value of L is 20 H is 10 F1 is 30 F0 is 20 and F2 is 25 so these values are substituted in this formula and after doing all these calculations we obtain mode equal to 26.6367 now we have formula ready made formula for Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness it is given by mean minus mode divided by standard deviation mean was 25.3 this is the value of mean 25.3 standard deviation is 12.0379 and the mode is 26.667 so we substitute all these values here and we obtain that Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness is minus 0.1135 so in this way we can obtain Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness we have ready made formula mean minus mode divided by standard deviation but we have to do some work to obtain these three quantities so here we are using measures of central tendency which are mean and mode and we are also using measure of dispersion which is standard deviation and using these measures we are able to find out coefficient of skewness so in this way you can find out coefficient of skewness using mean mode and standard deviation but you must be able to find out mean mode and standard deviation if you are able to calculate this or you must be able to find out these things using direct method or shortcut methods so this is all about this session i hope you like it thank you very much